Uh, welcome back to day two of security, and privacy, uh, you know, the internet, the World Wide Web, and um, conspiracy theories. Here is your video for getting to class on time. So there's actually so many videos, your computer should be off, FYI, but there's so many videos that are amazing on this topic that I just listed a whole bunch of them. So I already showed you the ones on Monday, which I listed, but I've listed a bunch more. So uh, just to give you a little preview of some of the titles that are up there, like uh, James Starvis, How NATO's Supreme Commander Views Security, Why the World Needs WikiLeaks, How Cyber Attacks Threaten the World, the global power shift, let's take back the internet. So this would be really just fantastic viewing for an hour in the evening some night this week to just watch some of these videos. Uh, just awesome, very informative. I'm pretty torn between which one to show you because many of these are fantastic. Um, WikiLeaks and cyber attacks is out, but the global power shift, let's take back the internet, and NATO's Supreme Commander, total toss up. I'd probably narrow it down to take back the internet, NATO Supreme Commander, and then after that, I think uh, NATO Supreme Commander, this guy, I think he's a little nervous. He's a nervous presenter, you know, pretty intense situation on the stage in front of the world giving a talk. But um, uh, I think the information is pretty fascinating and captivating. It's the one that held my interest, like, oh, wow, trip out everything that's going on. So uh, let's watch that as you're in the cinema video. Forget the class on time. It's 16 minutes. Here we go. How many people liked it? Okay. And uh, do you guys have any thoughts or comments about it? <clears throat> well, it's kind of, if you, you could summarize, ah, you know, what's this guy's main message? Have like an open source, open public source, you know, to, to battle all kinds of things. Yeah. So just the power of collaboration and many people coming together to work on single projects and kind of presented many examples of positive projects for many different organizations, groups, private sector, government sector, sector, military coming together to increase security and thinking about security in multiple ways. You know, One of the things that really stands out to me about this talk is uh, his little comment about, hey, you know, he mentioned to people, you could friend me on Facebook. And that just really kind of made me think, wow, the world is so accessible. You know, the world is so accessible. Everybody is so accessible. Now granted, if maybe you're like right at the very top, if you're Barack Obama, if you are Brad Pitt, if you are, I don't know, Lady Gaga, right? Yeah, you're probably not gonna be able to get a message into them. You know, or they probably won't have, they won't take the time to respond even if they do see your message. Um, however, this guy here, I bet you could get in touch with him. Say, hey, I saw your talk. I thought it was really interesting. I'm working on this and this and this here. And your talk inspired me. And I bet you'd say, hey, great, thanks. You know, tell me more about what you're doing, you know? So in some ways it kind of speaks to me about the unlimited potential which stands before all of us. And particularly all of you, you're just starting out with your education and your, your lives as, you know, people work, moving into the workforce or moving into a new position within the workforce. There's so much potential for you to create and think about where you want to go. Uh, and write your own future, whatever you want it to be. Um, you know, creating Wiki Wikipedia, creating some new website, like that entire thing that we talked about the first couple of weeks, that technology is really about innovation. Innovation is the cornerstone of technology. It's like, wow, how can I make the world better? Security is interesting. You know, what kind of a service could, or website, you know, or is there some way that a website could be created that allows people to collaborate on creating security. How can we change airport security in a collective group way or change crime? Like how crime is fought in a collective group way. Is there some way we could create like wiki crime, you know, or 
you know, uh, the crime commons, where somehow people come together to fight crime, where anybody could be contributing to cases that are on file all over the world. Here's a case in this neighborhood. Contribute anything. What did you see? Upload video. You know, uh, anonymous testimony. Are you willing to testify? Like, wow, that's a great idea. I just came up with it. <laughs> that's copyright me, by the way. However, if you use it, I'm not going to charge you because I think it's going to be awesome. But why isn't that website out there? Seriously. Or maybe somebody's tried it and just hasn't gotten traction. You know, but that would be a cool website. Or on the other side of it, holy crap, let's go to work for the drug cartels. Right? They need ways to transport drugs over here into America. They're building submarines. Let's, let's, let's start creating dro robot drones, drone planes, right? So just really small ones. Like let's create, uh, you know how they have the, the Predator unmanned aerial vehicles, right? You guys know about those? Predator unmanned aerial vehicles. How many people know about them? Let me see your hands. Okay, two. So right now, like a lot of our, our planes, our uh, Predator UAV. The, these are a lot of our planes that do strikes in Iraq and Afghanistan. And, you know, we're, we're having unmanned vehicles, unmanned vehicles uh, fighting our wars. So those are just remote control airplanes, very sophisticated. Well, maybe we could create small ones this big, and be able to sell them for a couple thousand dollars, and they would carry 50 pounds, 200 pounds, and they'd fly at 600, 800 miles an hour, and you just program in their destination, and they would just be like 50 feet off the floor, or 100 feet off the deck, just and then they'd go to wherever they are programmed, to, to, uh, you know, through a GPS, and then they just pop a parachute and they land right there. So you can fly in 50 pounds, 500, 200 pounds of cocaine at 600 miles an hour, and you could launch, you know, and you could sell those for a couple thousand dollars to the drug cartels. American gun companies are selling the drugs and they're getting to the gun cartels, so why not sell these little, you know, drone aircraft? You could be on either side. And holy crap, really? Credit card cybercrime is a $2 trillion a year industry. Did you hear those two guys did credit card fraud? And they'd amass 10 billion, 10 billion, 10 billion. They'd amass 10 billion. Steve Jobs net worth. Steve Jobs added to their forage missing 8.3 billion. Okay, he started Apple. Apple computers. It's like iconic. It's like one of the two largest companies in the tech history of Amer in America, in the world. And he was worth $8.3 billion. And two guys did credit card fraud in a couple of years amassed $10 billion? Like, wait a second. Holy cow, that's huge. That's, that's amazing. How many, how many people are in America? How many? 311 million. So if you took a dollar from each American, you'd have 311 million dollars. You guys would all give me a buck, right? I wish I could get a buck from everybody in America. I'd be worth 311 million dollars. It's only a dollar? Come on, give me a dollar. I give dollars to the guys out on the corner. Oh, there's another idea. How can panhandlers generate money online? <laughs> a dollar for, so three dollars, three dollars from every American would give you a billion. Right? So if you need ten, you need thirty dollars from every American for ten billion dollars. Thirty dollars from every American for ten billion dollars. Well, it's not that much to rip off from each American if you have access to their credit card. That's an interesting number. So just like a lot of interesting pieces kind of stood out to me. I really like that open source collaboration for making the world safer. We were looking at on, heck, that's not the one I want to look at. That's the one I want to look at. We were looking at security and privacy on Monday, and we saw a lot of stuff about, hey, be careful what information you share out there in the world. Uh, 
and uh, you know who has it, how it'll be used. Even if you innocuously share information, it could create problems. I, I shared a story with my other class yesterday, which I didn't share with you guys. Like I knew somebody who went to a funeral, and then their cell phone vibrated, so they stepped outside the funeral, and they started talking on their cell phone. And the cell phone, so you never know if you're sharing information, right? What might be happening? Their cell phone connected to the PA system inside the church. And what they were saying broadcasted to everybody at the funeral. And they said, no, I'm at a funeral. It's kind of boring. I'm just here for work. You know, like, wow. And like in privacy, that's one thing to say to a friend. But you got to be careful with technology because you never know who's listening to it. I had to talk to somebody Monday night who, just because of the circumstances of my life, I have to deal with this person. You know, it's like... You know, okay, in life, business arrangements, things like that, you got to deal with people. And this person started to flip their lid. I just put them on speakerphone. So my wife, my my parents, we were all, you know, we were at my parents' house, right? They were all listening to this person just go completely nuts, right? Like crazy kind of nuts. Like, wow, you're, you're a bit crazy. And I was just like, uh-huh, I hear where you're coming from. No, that doesn't change my position. This is how I feel about it. And we have a difference. You know, and I could record that and make a really interesting YouTube video and say, listen to this person totally losing their mind. You know, it's kind of funny. This person's totally losing their mind. And sad. It's kind of tragic. But that's the conditioning they have, how they deal with that situation. Um, I've gone to meetings before. I've gone to meetings before with people where it's kind of heavy. You know, you get older, you sometimes have business deals, right? And I've gone to meetings that have been kind of heavy. I just put my, I don't have an iPhone, I have an iPad, I put my iPad on voice record. Stick it in the open pocket of my backpack, the whole conversation's recorded. I just file that, burn it to a CD, put it, put it with the rest of my CDs. Anything ever comes up, right? Legal questions, well you said this. Well, actually let's go listen to all the conversations from all of our meetings. Matter of fact, I'm gonna create transcripts of them. I'll see you in court. We'll see who said what, because I recorded it all. Is that admissible in court? I don't know, we'll let the lawyers figure it out. But I got the recordings, and I know where you stand, and I know what was said, I know what the truth is. If you want to hear it, I'll send you the files, and then we can talk about who has integrity, who doesn't have integrity, and who's not keeping their agreements. You call these companies, we're recording this for customer service purposes, and training purposes, and you know to provide better customer service. They're basically recording it to do whatever the hell they want with it. I don't know. So you just have to be really careful Anytime you're sending email, you're texting, you're flirting with somebody, you know, via text or on the phone, you're talking with somebody on, on a cell phone, you're 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 talking with somebody in person, anything could be being recorded, all that information. So you just have to be careful. Um, so how do we protect ourselves? Protecting our privacy. How do we protect ourselves? You just want to be careful, particularly with high-risk personal data. So what is high-risk personal data? Your bank statements. Okay, bank numbers. So you want to shred documents that come to you that are bank accounts, credit card, you know, applications, you know, any of that stuff that comes in the mail, shred it. Okay? Um, so, yes, good. What else? Personal identification stuff like social security. Social security number. Don't give people your social security number. My work on forms here sometimes asks for my social security number. I cross out that and I write my employee ID number. If they need my social security number, they can talk to HR and they know who I am because my employee ID number is there. So limit who you give your social security number to. I know here at school they use it, right? No? Don't they ask you for it sometimes? I like financial aid or something. Yeah, so for financial aid. Okay, so maybe they change that. Good. What else? So social security number, driver's license, mother's maiden last name, that kind of stuff, right? Uh, let's see what else I got listed here. Social security, driver's license, date of birth, mother's maiden last name, credit card information. All right. uh, one thing people don't know about credit cards, how many people think, oh gosh, credit cards, doing transactions online, scary. I mean, maybe I won't do it. How many people feel kind of hesitant about doing transactions online? A few people. So you just need to make sure when you do transactions online, you use the same sort of prudence that you would use in the real world, right? So if you go into a completely shady looking shop, maybe I'll pay cash. 
you know? But even then, eh, I'm not too concerned about it. If you're online, you know, think about which website you're giving your credit card to. So, a couple things you can do with your credit card to make sure that, well, first of all, anytime you give your credit card to anybody, you give it to somebody at a restaurant, like the busboy walks away with it or the waiter walks away with it, all they have to do is take out their cell phone and snap a picture of the front and the back to have all your information. Right? Oh, I got the numbers on the front and the back. They take a picture and then they have it. Okay? So uh, it's, just, it's easy to lose your credit card information in the real world just as much online. When you do something online, you want to make sure it's secure. We looked at HTTPS on Monday, right? HTTPS. So making sure that uh, the website is secure and it's encrypted so it can't be grabbed out of the air. But the other thing to know about credit cards is uh, you're limited in your liability. The Truth in Lending Act limits you to $50 of liability for any purchases at locations like more than 100 miles away from your residence. So if you're buying things online, that pretty much is most places probably. There's some, some crazy rule like that. I don't know why it's not limited closer. It may, may be different. I'm going to see if I actually have the details of that here. Maybe I do somewhere. I don't see. Oh, here it is. So, uh, credit card holders are liable for unauthorized use of their card only up to $50. There's some kind of geographic restriction, so you can look it up. But when somebody tries to tell you credit card insurance protection, don't buy it. You're already protected. And they'll say, well, well, we protect you a little bit more when you point this out to them. How do you protect me? Well, we'll send you a phone call. We'll call you, <laughs> you know, if something's happening. You're going to call me anyhow, you know, I don't know. So if you get fraudulent charges, you can pr protest them. But no, you got to do that quickly. you got to do that quickly. So you also just want to monitor your credit card transactions, right? And that's where something like Quicken, where you download your transactions instead of getting them once every month, five or six weeks after you've made transactions or after something's occurring, you get, you get to see them on a weekly basis if you're downloading your transactions into some kind of software lets you see what's happening on your credit card. So you can see if something's going on. And they're pretty good now when purchases are being made that are outside your normal shopping behavior. They'll shut your card down and give you a call. Or you end up calling them, why isn't my card working? So, so protecting your high-risk personal data. You always want to be circumspect about how, who you give it to, who you give your data to. Just watch where you lose data. Oh, they're asking for my phone number. Oh, they're asking for my email. Create a junk email, right? Give them a, a junk phone number or use your Google Voice number so you're keeping your real stuff more secure, more private. So just be super careful you give things to. That's the entire thing about forms being secure. We already learned about that. When you get rid of hard drives, make sure you delete everything on the hard drive by wiping it or scrubbing it with something like Derek's Boot and Nuke or destroy the hard drive. Right? So if you have a business with critical patient information on it, destroy the hard drive. Um, I recently know a doctor's office who uh, thieves at Herndon and Blackstone uh, took guns, <laughs> shot open the windows, right? walked in uh, for, I don't know how the alarm what didn't go off or what, but, and then they, uh, they took, it's kind of an interesting way to break in, they just shot the windows open. But then they took all the computers with all the medical patient records, right? And on the hard drive. So thinking about, well, how can I secure, you know, my uh, physical location if I have really confidential client information so I'm not embarrassed, right? Do I need to secure it somewhere off site and we're accessing it remotely? Is the transmission then of the data from one location to another encrypted? Can I store it locally but it's encrypted? Or do my servers need to be in a really well-locked room that's super impossible to break into, almost like a safe, you know? So, you know, just thinking about that stuff. Da, da, da. You know, even Word and PDF files, like if you erase information and then forward it on, the information you've erased could still be recovered from those files. One of the big risks for businesses are their employees, so just make sure you guys hide you know, if you're working for a company that hires or you start a company, make sure you hire well. That's where a lot of, you know, businesses get kind of broken into from the inside, from insiders. It's a big risk. Um, 
We talked about spoofing and phishing on Monday. So just never click a link inside an email. Just let that be burned into your brain. PayPal, eBay, your bank sends you an email, click this link. Don't ever click the link inside the email because it'll take you to a spoof website. Uh, you want to have secure passwords. What's it mean to have a secure password? So I know tons of people who have really crazy, easy passwords, right? Maybe some of you are here today. What's a secure password? A secure password should be super long and just random letters and numbers, random le letters and numbers. So just look at the keyboard and make something up. Or, or you could or incorporate some real information and some junk information. All right. Or you could do some sort of a, a, a um, some sort of a a blend. There, secure passwords is right there. So you could do some sort of a blend. Like this could be a blend of a password. Your password could be. your password. So how would you remember that? Let me Okay. How can you remember that? Well, you come up with some sort of a phrase, like, we will never run away, 54, whatever the phrase is, right? So, WWNRA, 54, AMA, YTTU, uh, you, uh, you come up with some phrase for that, right? Whatever it is. Um, whatever. And then, 04-12-1991, that could be your birthday. But that would be a really hard password to crack. And then when it's time to go to another website, like, oh, what's your password for Bank of America? Well, you know, just take the first three letters of every website, and that, that's where you put in those letters, right? So, you know, most people, you know, if somebody were to actually get your password, would they figure out that those three letters are actually, oh, that's, that's my part for Bank of America, there's my part for Amazon, here's my part for Twitter, Right? It's just like the first three letters, you just build it right in, and then those three letters are changing, and you have the same password for every one, but it's also different. You're just changing those three letters. We will never run away 54, TWI, you totally, you, you should, you should not try, there we go, you should not try 0412-1991. That would be a hard, hard, hard password for computers to try to break. One of the ways they break passwords is they just keep trying all kinds of possibilities. And the possibilities they try are common things. They could cross-reference who are all, who, you know, all this information about you. Look, who are your pets? Let's try pet names. Let's try your kid names. That's going to crack it so often, pet names, kid names. I was at a, a business the other day, and I need to get on their wireless router. And I was like, uh, what would their password be? I typed in the business name for the password. Awesome, I'm on. <laughs> Whoever set it up, just set up. It'll just be the name of the business. You know, because that's what people do a lot, right? So, that's a good way to create a secure password. We talked about hacking and hacking methods. Malware, spyware, viruses. You just want to make sure you're running antivirus software and updating it. Malware, mal, comes from like malicious, bad, malware, right? Spyware can actually capture your keystroke. Something gets installed on your computer and it captures uh, what you type in. So and then it emails that to somebody every so often. So they see, oh, you went to Union Bank and then, okay, there's your username and password. And then they log in and transfer money somewhere else. Um, so those are all kind of interchangeable words. Malware, spyware, viruses. Spyware is a little bit more specific. 
So unsafe files to install, exe, ActiveX, WIMP, web installs. You know, it might be interesting just to look. How do computers get viruses? Or how do computers get hacked, right? In tablets, how do Apple's computers and products simply, do Macs ever get viruses? Uh, do not have as many viruses as Mac and as Windows machines. You know, but just kind of interesting, best answers. Email attachments, right? Email attachments are huge. So when somebody sends you an email attachment, be circumspect. Even Word documents. You know, if you got antivirus software, scan it before you open it. Your software should be doing that anyhow, but you can often right-click a file and say, scan this file. Shared network resources. So, uh, you know, they'll, they'll crawl over the network. Viruses can. Um, removable media, right? Uh, DVDs, you know, can be burned to any software that you get. You've got to make sure it's from a trusted source, any software you're going to install. Um, it could be flash drives, you know, internet downloads. Anything you download from the internet could potentially, you know, have viruses in it. So you just want to make sure, again, you're getting the stuff from a secure, secure uh, uh, source. Today's modern antivirus software will usually be set to scan these downloaded files for you, at least prompt you with a reminder to do so. If not, then do it manually. Many, many documents and spreadsheets can contain useful macros that perform certain functions for you automatically. However, macro viruses also exist, and they use the functionality of macros to spread themselves to other files and can make alterations to the files infected. Interesting stuff. So you can read about how viruses, how you get viruses online, uh, and how to protect from them. Good free antivirus is uh, download.com. And I use AVG on my PC at home. AVG, it's a free edition. So you can just go to download.com. Download.com is a good place to download stuff. And you can get that. Uh, you know, you got to protect yourself from yourself too, right? Common sense updates, where you're doing business, what you're looking at. You know, keeping adults safe. Be cautious what information you give out anywhere, making videos, posting pictures, posting comments. You know, um, right? Often good to use aliases just in public places. I'm kind of lackadaisical about this stuff. Partly it's because I also try to market my writing. So there's a lot of stuff out there with just, you know, my real identity. Maybe I should have uh, done it under a more of an alias or something like that. But um, don't reveal personal information. Don't respond to harasses or insults. Safety chill chips for children. Always you should monitor kids' activity. You should have the PC in a public room, right? The computer somewhere where, you know, anybody could be walking by at any time so kids know that they, sh you know, could get caught if they're looking at stuff they, they, uh, they shouldn't be looking at. They, you should tell them which activities are allowed and which aren't. And you should tell them to instruct a parent or an adult if any request for personal information or a personal meeting is made. You know, so just talk to your young ones in your life, whether they're your kids or your nieces or nephews or whatever. You know, oh, how are you liking the internet? What do you like to do? Anybody ever talk to you about how to be safe on the internet and, you know, what, what not to do and things like that? It's a, it's a great place, but sometimes you've got to make sure, kind of like in the real world, you know, some strangers, you've got to be careful. They're offering you candy, you don't want to get in their car, that kind of deal. Um, let's see. You want to make sure that your uh, Windows operating system, if you're running Windows, is set to do automatic updates. So you can do search in the bottom here, Windows Update. Windows Update. You can check to make sure that, hey, that's set to go on automatically. Check for updates. Question? Um, well, just before we get off the topic of credit yeah. cards and fraud and stuff like that, yeah. I had some um, uh, just information of anybody who who actually receives or purchases like the prepaid cards like Barnes and Noble, Target, stuff like that. Well, about a year ago, I was working uh, retail loss prevention and we came across this this guy who always would always come into the store and I I was thinking that he was a shoplifter because he would always go up to the CVS card, prepaid cards, he'd grab a couple in front, like Barnes and Noble, all the online ones you can go online and purchase with. And so he would get them and he'd walk around the store and I thought he was putting them in his pocket so I was, I was watching him. But what he was doing is he was writing down information from the card, the 16-digit the, the number in front of the prepaid card, 
a three-digit number in the back, just like the regular cards, and a phone number, all that stuff. And so it didn't really click to me what he was doing at first, because he, yeah, he, he, wow. he, he would go put the cards right back. Yeah. So it took me about a week after he kept doing it over and over, because we got a phone call from the phone. <coughs> we said, hey, I purchased a Barnes & Noble card a few weeks ago, like three, four weeks ago, and I gave it to a niece, and there's nothing on it. It was thirty dollars on it. She had put on there, and then there was nothing, you know. So I'm like, what in the heck? So finally, uh, you know, I looked at the cards, took a really good look at it, and it, as long as you have the information on the card, the three-digit number in the back, and the telephone number, you can literally just keep checking. You know, if you're a thief, you can keep checking the balance of the card. If there's a balance on there, you go to bondsnoble.com, put in the information on there, and you can have stuff received to your house, and it's you know, it's stolen information. So yeah. it took a while to figure that out. And we actually, you know. So just be careful with check your check balances of cards and stuff like that. Yeah, that's a, that's a great idea. I've never thought of that. Don't some of those have a little thing you got to scratch off to be able to get the last numbers? Was he scratching those off? I'm not too sure. This this one was in particular was a Barnes and Noble one. It just had the three. The oh. was nothing. Yeah, so maybe some of them would do it, some of them don't. Well, that's a great, that's a great scam right there. You could just, even if you're working, like, you know, there, you're working like the, the register late at night, could be an employee, an employee could just snap photos of all of the numbers on all of the cards and then, you know, sell those to somebody on the East Coast. And then it's like, whoa, who knows how they're, they're happening, you know? And same thing with that late at night, you would have people come in with stolen credit card information and they would try to intimidate the cashiers, like, you know, oh, I, I don't have my card, I forgot it, but I need this purchase right now, just put in my number. You know, they want you to, they wanted the cashiers to put in the number without any ID, you know, photo ID or anything like that, just manually put it into the system, and there you go. Yeah. They were trying to intimidate, you know, that way. Yeah, so. yeah. It's amazing how many people are out there hustling in that way. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, Every day. It's epidemic as far as... I actually really like crime. I think it's creative. And uh, I like kind of like, you know, testing systems and finding the breaks in the rules but my moral you know just like my moral conscience that's where i'm like ah i don't want to take advantage of somebody else i wouldn't want that done to me but you know like just the entire sort of subterfuge or you know breaking the system or cloak and dagger espionage aspect of it is really alluring to me personally though the moral aspect of not wanting to do somebody else what i wouldn't want done to myself i'm taking advantage of somebody hurting somebody um, that's where I kind of the brakes get hit, but it like wow, that's really fascinating to hear about, you know, uh, how people uh, break the system. But but then it's also surprising, even kind of shocking. Joseph Conrad wrote The Heart of Darkness, which they based the movie Apocalypse Now on. Has this famous line: "Fascination with abomination, fascination with abomination." Just it's fascinating to see, you know, how many people are out there just hustling for their own gain, and even at the expense and cost of others. Um, I asked a friend who's a police officer, I said, hey, you know, I was re reading about all the stuff that's happened in Mexico, all this crime down there, and the cartels. He says, that, I says, that stuff's starting to come up. Are you guys preparing? He says, it's starting to come up. He goes, but when it starts to come up more, it's just going to be a war. It's just going to be, it's going to be game on, you know, because uh, it's harder in America to bribe uh, police and officials, and, um, and so, you know, they won't be able to intimidate like that. But yeah, for sure it's here. They had a sheriff officer recently get shot. I don't know if you guys heard that. Um, somewhere, I, I hadn't heard it, but it sounded like somewhere out on the freeway 99. And uh, a van went by a couple of times and the van came back by and opened the door and started shooting. And he pulled his gun and started shooting back, like just very close from the way I heard the story. And he got shot twice. But he got one of the guys because they later found the van. There's brain matter in the van, and um, but they they figure oh they, they were doing that because they're going to shoot the officer, and then all the other police will come there. Oh, an officer's been shot, and then they'll be able to run their drugs by without fear of interference. They're going to do a drug run down 99, and so they're creating a distraction. What they figure maybe they were up to, right? But it's just like wow, that's pretty hardcore. Just seeing the crime that's out there. I don't know, that story comes to mind for me. Great, great story, man. Thanks for sharing. I really liked it. It was a really nice anecdote. Yeah, but hmm, a lot of hustle. Hmm. Desperate times, you know. Yeah, it's even there when it's not desperate times, but more so when the when it is. Yeah, crazy world, man.
and just all the guns that are out there. A lot of people are buying guns. A lot of people are afraid. And then, like, uh, my mom was working with somebody who's a, a surgeon here in town, and, and he's sitting at his desk in his office, and a gun went off in another room, and the bullet went through the wall and passed right by his head. He felt it go right by his head. And he's like, what the heck? You know, found it and went out to see what's going on. And a woman had a gun in her purse, and she dropped her purse, and it discharged. Right? And then the bullet went shooting through the wall. It's like, okay, if you have your gun loaded and a round chamber and the safety's not on, you shouldn't be having a gun. <laughs> you know? I don't know. Or even, you know, you shouldn't have a round chambered if you're just carrying it around. There's a lot of people out there with guns. I don't think they know what they're doing with them. Crazy. So uh, make sure your Windows is getting updated. We talked about securing your Wi-Fi, but there's that information. If you didn't already get that in your notes, changing your SSID, uh, disabling SSID broadcast, changing the admin credentials, enabling MAC address authentication, enabling WPA uh, security. Um, and then we talked about encryption last week, right? Or Monday. So here's an example of the ROT 13. E becomes R. L becomes Y. Right? So, you know, here's the encrypted and there, and there's the unencrypted. A little bit of how encryption works. And you guys all know what the piracy is, right? Just illegally. Because um, we're in some ways, you know, it's hard, it's hard to sort of be an outstanding person to shoot straight. You really got to ask yourself, what kind of a person do I want to be? And, uh, and I, I, I've gone through a phase in my life where I just kind of became really sort of discouraged. I used to be one of the people who I, I call piggy people, right, who just didn't really think about other people so much. And then I went through a phase where I had contempt and I was sort of discouraged, discouraged with my fellow hum, humans, with the rest of humanity. It's just like, wow, people can be really piggy sometimes, you know. And, uh, and now I feel like, okay, that's just like humanity. That's just the way it is. But um, it's, it's shocking to me. You've you got to ask yourself what kind of a person you want to be. So we're all thieves in some ways, or a lot of us are acting in ways not considerate of others. So, you know, it would be hard for us to steal from Best Buy, to just grab the DVD and walk out, or the music. But you know what? Downloading it online, easier. But you know what? Oh, dude, you got the new CD. Your friend got it, sticking it into your computer and ripping it into iTunes. No problem. <laughs> you know, and it's all the same thing. The artist did not get paid for you getting the CD, right? Regardless of if it's from Best Buy or downloaded online or just your friend, you borrowed it from a friend. So that, that's all piracy. And it's interesting to see where that line is drawn. Um, I went to Costco uh, maybe in the spring, maybe it was last fall, and we bought a case of wine. And I got home and I looked at the receipt. They only charged us for one bottle, right? So 12 bottles. I got 12 bottles. They charged me for one. Um, what do you do in that situation? What do you do in the situation when the cashier gives you the wrong change? Do you think, ha-ha, sucker, bad luck on you, you know? Too bad for you. What do you do when you find the wallet, right? It's and it's a little bit more too. personal. Huh? That's lost her bitch as well, too. They're watching on camera, so. Yeah. So I, I went back to cost because for me, I have a rule. And my rule is not to do anything to anybody else. I want to want done unto me, all right? The golden rule. Or, I mean, just basically treat other people how I like to be treated. And if I make a mistake, hey, I'd like, uh, I'd like you know, somebody to help me out when I make a mistake. And, you know, me not have to, I don't know, whatever. But so um, not another one of my rules, not to take anything from anybody that wasn't freely given. Even to the extent that when I had a roommate, I ran out of laundry detergent, you know, and I went to, did I tell you this already? I went to, I, I took a scoop of detergent from my roommate, and I was about to put it in the wash, and I thought, I need to go ask, it's not mine. <laughs> so I went and I said, hey, can I have some of your laundry detergent? I ran out, can I use a scoop? And they're like, are you kidding me? Of course you can, that's no problem, you don't even need to ask. I'm like, I just want to make sure. But then they're always like, wow, Todd, he's not going to take anything of mine without checking in with me. As opposed to, like, maybe you guys have all had that roommate who's, like, eating everybody else's food. It's like, would you quit drinking my beer? Dude, why don't you just chill out and relax? I'm not going to chill out and relax. I bought the beer. Quit drinking it. It's my beer. I bought a case of beer, and I've had three, and they're all gone. Go get your own job. That's, like, two hours of work. Right? Uh, so um, I ended up going back to Costco, and I said, hey, you get, there was a mistake, you know? And they're like, what was the mistake? 
I said I bought a case of wine. You guys only charge me for one in step 12. And they're like, okay, go see that person. I went over and I gave them the money for the rest of it. It's like 140 bucks. They took it and then they had a little book. They made an entry. And all the other entries were minus, 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 minus. Money going out. Like people would realize there's a mistake in their favor. So they're going to come get their money. And then next to the one I did, they put a little plus and put in the money. I was like, yeah. But, you know, it's just like you see people like go grocery shopping and then like, you know, they leave their cart in the middle of the, the stall. It's like, no, really, I'll move it for you. It's okay. You know, I'll just park here in the middle of the parking lot for a second, get out of my car, move the cart, park, and then get back out and then take the cart in. Just leave your cart wherever you want. Leave your dirty diapers too. I saw a woman throw a dirty diaper out on the parking lot. It's like, really, you know, what, what, are you trying to, what, what's your justification? You think you're creating jobs? <laughs> Is that your solution to the economy? You're going to leave crap all over to create jobs so that people have to pick up after you? I don't know. Thank you, people. So piracy is taking intellectual property from people that doesn't belong to you, however you do it. Does anybody have any other thoughts or comments about keeping yourself safe in this digital world? Online behavior, you know, uh, you know, uh, technology, sharing information, all that stuff. Anybody got any thoughts on that? How many people feel like, yeah, this was a good conversation these last two days. It's kind of a heads up for me, maybe a reminder, maybe new information to, yeah, I, I got to be a little careful what I put out there. So a couple of hands. How many people feel like this is a total waste of time? I already know all this stuff. You're just blabbing about school stuff. Okay, nobody. Fantastic. One last thought I have about it. Ah, we have a whole other thing to do. I forgot about that. It's not going to be long, I promise you. Uh, one last thought I have is just be careful what you look at in terms of like, uh, you know, pornography and human sexuality, because that could really warp your head. Um, like I said, I live with uh, kind of in my circle of family, friends, or psychologists, and they see people who, you know, not only not only pornography, but just also what groups are you looking at? Where do you let your mind go? You know, in terms of like sometimes the mind can get extreme, but people people develop disorders, disorders, and if you have a disorder or you, the the burgeoning of one, it could get nurtured and it could grow into something that's really terrible. So stop it before it becomes bad. So if you have some impulse which is kind of uh, deviant and not appropriate or maybe even harmful. Um, but So some of the disorders that could be out there is like you end up preferring like real life no longer works for you. Your girlfriend or your boyfriend no longer works for you. You need the internet. Right? Like, that's one of the disorders that's out there. <laughs> you know, like, um, and, and, you know, there's just all kinds of other stuff that is just best to really regulate what, what you expose your head to. Like, people wonder, why is there so much violence? In the presidential debate last night, they said, we really need to curb this culture of violence. Well, you know, uh, we've always been a violent species. I mean, reference the gladiators and the Roman, Roman Colosseum. But, um, you know, I wonder how much media impacts us when we watch all those movies, you know, about gunslingers and things like that. How much does that do it? Um, I don't know. So just be careful what you expose your head to. Okay, so who's going Saturday to Google? Because I have handouts for that. I have a better map. I have a better map. Did you get the handout our day? You want that one? Yeah. All right, I'll get you there. Here's the better map. Better map, better map. Two. Come on, awesome. Okay, so the bus leaves at 6 a.m. And that map shows you where. So it means you should get there at 5.50. And that number on the bottom, uh, Josh Woodward's number, go ahead and call that if we're running late. All right. Anybody else need the map? Cool. And then here are your chapter eight key terms. These are the things out of chapter A, which I think you need to know them so that you're not an idiot in the world when it comes to technology. So we learned about ARPANET. Did I already pass this out? Yeah. You already got chapter A. You need chapter 9. 
the heck? I gave you the wrong one. Uh, here, let me show you chapter 9 online on the overhead, and I'll bring you chapter 9 next week. But let's go over it now while it's fresh. Sorry, I passed out the wrong one. I brought the wrong one. Here's chapter 9. So chapter 9 deals with computer crime. Any crime that's occurring, let me make that bigger. Chapter 9 deals with computer crime. Any crime that's occurring using computers, they consider that computer crime. Cyber terrorism, cyber crime, cyber warfare, these are all new terms. They're pretty self-explanatory. How do you control access to any type of a thing? You, do, you authenticate. You have to authenticate who's allowed to have access. You can authenticate in three ways. What you know, what you have, who you are. What you know, who, what you have, who you are. So what you know, your PIN number for your ATM. What you have, your ATM card. That's how you authenticate access in your ATM. Who you are is, uh, another word for that is biometrics. Right, biometrics. So that is, uh, you know, fingerprint, thumbprint scan or retina scan or something. You see it in the movies. We learned about the difference between firewalls and antivirus software. A firewall is like, you know, you could say, hey, here is my computer system in the nuclear laboratory, and we do not allow any internet access. Anybody trying to access anything over the internet, the firewall just cuts that off. No emails coming in, the firewall cuts that off. No emails going out, the firewall cuts that off. Right? So you, the firewall can regulate what kind of traffic can come in and out of one network. Um, and antivirus software just looks for viruses on a system. That's the difference between antivirus and firewall. We, we talked about securing a wireless router. You guys will have those notes when I pass this out next week. Encryption, we've looked at what encryption is. Secure web pages, we saw what secure web pages are and how to tell when they're secure. That, if none of that rings a bell for you, raise your hand and I'll go over it again. A VPN, sometimes you hear this term, a VPN, a virtual private network. Sometimes you'll hear it as tunneling, tunneling through the internet. Tunneling through the internet. Basically, that's just an uh, encrypted connection between lo two locations. So nobody can intercept that data, right? So here's one location, and then you send encrypted data to another location. And it could give you access to other networks as if you're actually there. So I could access, you know, through a virtual private network or a tunnel, my computer in my office from anywhere in the world by just encrypting all of the communications between my computer. It'll be like I'm just sitting right at that computer and I could have access to everything else. So that's the idea of a VPN or tunneling. Uh, a DOS attack, a DOS attack, it's not called a DOS attack. I just read DOS when I see DOS. A DOS attack is a denial of service attack. So sometimes you hear about DOS attacks. And basically, people will get a whole bunch of zombie computers or botnets. So they get computers, they infect them with viruses. Those viruses you know, uh, will just sit there dormant until they turn them on. And then they can turn them on, like at millions of computers that have been affected, and they can say, start sending requests to CNN's website. And so CNN's website will get flooded with so many requests that it won't be able to handle all the requests. And so other people who are legitimately trying to access CNN will say, will receive a DOS, a denial of service error, meaning CNN's website's not available because it's just overloaded right now with attacks or with requests. So that's a denial of service attacks. Zombie computers are botnets, are computers that are used for other purposes. Yeah? Is that how you can crash a server? Or do you have, if you have so many people going on on a website at one time? Yeah, I don't know if it actually crashes it, but you get a denial of service. So those changes might, terms might be used interchangeably. A crash means that the system has to actually be turned off and rebuilt or rebooted. So maybe when the, all the requests cease, maybe it'll still be working fine, or maybe it actually tweaks it. I don't know. Um, so crash, I often think of more like software just tweaking, you know? Uh, zombie computer and botnet. Anybody confused about what a zombie computer is or a botnet, right? So a computer that's appropriated for another use. Uh, those phrases generally mean that it's not going to be a really good, like a zombie computer, not a good use. A botnet, uh, also when you look at that on Wikipedia, it also says uh, not a good, good use. That's just general description. But you can also contribute your processing power to positive uses. I forget what that's called. I don't know if there's a name for that. That's the same kind of idea. When I'm not using my computer, 
you know, this uh, scientific research foundation can use my processing power and other millions of computers to help try to process a problem. You know, so you could sign up for that. I haven't looked into it much. Anybody know anything about it? Me either. And then we have uh, malware, viruses, worms, and Trojan horses. So malware and viruses, interchangeable terms. A uh, worm is a more specific kind of a malware or virus, which just kind of keeps crawling from connected computer to connected computer if there isn't protection to stop it. A Trojan horse uh, is just like in the myth, you know, appears as one thing but does another. It looks like it's something cool or nice, but it really has a nefarious purpose happening. Uh, and we talked about antivirus software. Dot cons is kind of the phrase for online cons, dot cons. Salami shaving, if you ever hear that, uh, is a classic sort of computer programmer thing where they hired, they hired a dude to write software for a bank. And then you realize, you know what? There's fractions of a penny of interest. So somebody's earned 10 and a half cents interest and they would just round it up or round it down. He said, no, quit doing that rounding. No, I think they always rounded it down. He said, quit doing that rounding and take all those half pennies, three quarter pennies, quarter pennies, tenth of a penny, put them all on my account. Right? So he was, he was getting all these small little shavings from other people's accounts, half a cent of interest, and putting them into his own account. I don't know, you could Google it, Wikipedia, and see if it gives you a dollar amount, how much people have gotten away with with that technique. It's one technique. Identity theft, right? Somebody steals your identity and goes and buys cards and cars under your name and credit cards under your name. It could be a nightmare. Phishing, sending those emails, right? Don't click links in emails, hoping that you'll click it and then you get taken to a spoof website. Cyberbullying, cyberstalking, pornography, sexting, common sense updates. Keep yourself safe, keep your children safe. The end. All right, you guys got 20 minutes. I gotta leave at 5:30 today. Um, I've got uh, another commitment, so uh, yeah, we've got 20 minutes to work on whatever you like. Go ahead and turn your computers on, and um, that's it. If you want to go early today, that's okay with me. Just say, hey, today's a go early day. But if you want to work, you got till 5:30.